Hello, it's a beautiful day here in Joliet, Illinois. Welcome to the much-awaited edition of Joliet History, Plain and Simple. Today we are focusing on William Cornelius Van Horn. Definitely a guy who should be on your top 10 list of historical figures. First of all, let's get some of his family history out of the way. His name is William Cornelius Van Horn. His father's name was Cornelius Covenhoven Van Horn. And that can be a little tricky and a little confusing. So we'll talk about his dad first. Now, his dad studied law at Union College, uh, but brought his family this way to seek a fortune in farming. Unfortunately, um, his house, barns, law books, everything was destroyed by fire, and his first wife died shortly afterwards. Um, he abandoned farming, and he went back to law and became the recorder of Will County, Illinois. Um, and he moved his family uh, from the first place they lived in Will County, which was somewhere close to Frankfurt, where Frankfurt is today. Um, but he moved to Joliet, um, and he was active in the city getting its first charter. And because of this, he was elected Joliet's first mayor. Um, and apparently, uh, when the city built a new bridge, it was named after him. Um, and that must have been when they built the uh, stone arched bridge that was across Jefferson Street. So that was that was his dad. Um, But William Cornelius Van Horn um, is most famous for overseeing the construction of the first Canadian transcontinental railroad. Let's see, according to my notes here. Which I can't seem to find at the moment. Um, okay, well, he was born here in Will County, and he was the el eldest child of, of Cornelius Van Horn. Um, in 1851, the family moved to Joliet. Uh, three years later, um, his father died, and the family found themselves living in poverty as they had no money. Um, at 14, Van Horn quickly achieved advancement as a telegraph operator with the Illinois Central and Michigan Central and Chicago and Alton railroads. In 1864, Van, Her Van Horn <clears throat> became the Chicago and Alton's Bloomington train dispatcher. In 1866, it's superintendent of telegraph, and in 1870, superintendent of transportation. In 1874, he rose to general manager of the Southern Minnesota Railroad. Later, he became its president. In 1879, he returned briefly to the Chicago and Alton as a general superintendent before assuming the same position with the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul. Van Horn was appointed general manager of the Canadian project to build a transcontinental railroad from Montreal to the Pacific in 1881. His driving leadership and formidable organization reached their peak in forcing the pace of construction his sound employee relations supplemented the director's tireless efforts to raise funds in hard times, and Van Horn was significantly complimented by his purchasing agency, T.D. Shaughnessy, 
formerly his general storekeeper, on the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul. Although the contract called for the railway's completion in 1891, the last spike was driven on November 7, 1885, which was well before it should have been finished. Now, Van Horn was made an honorary Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George in Queen Victoria's 1894 birthday honors. As an American citizen, he was technically not entitled to the prefix Sir. Nonetheless, he was thereafter addressed as Sir William. The Van Horn Institute, based in Calgary, Alberta, is affiliated with the University of Cal Calgary, Athabasca University, and the University of Alberta, and conducts research and policy studies relating to all things carriage-related, including rail, air, shipping, and road transportation, pipelines, electricity, and information networks. There is also a, a William Van Horn Elementary School in Vancouver, British Columbia. His summer estate on Minister's Island was designated as a National Historic Site in Canada in 1996, and he was inducted to the North American Railway Hall of Fame in the category of National Railway Workers and Builders. In 2011, Van Horn was featured in Rocky Mountain Express, a 45-minute IMAX film about the construction of the railroad. That was a little bit about his career. Um, so obviously he was very involved with the Canadian National Railroad. And of course the Canadian National is a prominent railroad that runs through Joliet as we know it today. Now, although he was living in Canada when he passed away, he was, and here's a picture of him, and here's a picture of him in, a little bit later in life, And a picture of uh, Canadian Pacific train. And although he was uh, living in Canada at the time of his death, his body was brought back to Joliet and he is buried in a family plot uh, in Oakwood Cemetery on Joliet's east side. There are also some family members that are, are buried in this plot as well. So even after he um, had all of these great things that happened to him and he made a lot of money, he remembered Joliet and uh, came back here for his final resting place. So once again, this is the guy that you need to put on your top 10 list of people to know about in historical Joliet. Um, I encourage you to come down to the Joliet Public Library to learn a little bit more about him. If you'd like to do that, we have some books um, that We'll, we'll mention him in more detail. Um, also, while you might be coming to the library, you might be want, might want to check out um, our programs for the rest of the year. Please take a look in our Joliet Public Library program guide. And uh, some you'll find that some of those programs you need to register for. Uh, some you can attend without registering, but um, make sure that you, you know, follow the directions that you need to follow 
And uh, that will be for uh, both the Joliet Public Library on Ottawa Street and the Joliet Public Library on Black Road. We hope to have more of these progr recorded programs soon. So uh, we will let you know that um, via calendar. And uh, once again, check out our website. And until next time, this is Anita Drilling from Joliet Public Library.